How's everybody doing? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Well, congratulations, guys. Uh, I just want to say thank you. I'm going to try not to fall off the stage first off. Um, and then just want to say thank you for um, just being awesome. It's been awesome over these last two years that I've gotten to know you guys. Thanks for making me feel welcome. Some of that is just done by roasting me, which I receive. Um, you know, but it's allowed me to feel at home. And, to fe- uh, and it really makes, you know, people talk about pastor's jobs being difficult, but there's some elements that are easy. And just being able to hang out with high schoolers and enjoy and share memories with them, that's, that's the easy part of my job. So I, I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to how God uses each of you. I'm privileged to say that I know you and hopefully at some point later in your life when you guys are, you know, getting married or whatever. Obviously, you don't want to think about those moments, but I want, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be waiting for my invite. If not, I'll be shedding a tear, but it's all good. And just want to mention that this class is super resilient, right? The class of 2023, they began their freshman year. The pandemic happened, right? So they went home and then they spent an entire year online and they were able to have the last, and they had time with masks, right? So you guys already have your old person story. What I mean by that is you already have what you're going to tell young kids that didn't live through the pandemic. You're going to be like, back in my day, we used to go to school online. We wore masks for two years, right? You're gonna, you already have your old person story. So when, when it happens, just remember Pastor, Pastor Stephen told you that that happened. If you remember nothing else, remember that, that that happened. And that'll be my chance to be able to roast you guys back. But the class of 2023 has chosen this as their motto. And it is to cherish the past, live in the present, and reach for the future. And while that is their motto, I believe that that carries some relevance for us. So I hope you'll join me as we uh, tackle each one of these topics. So let's pray real quick. Dear God, thank you just for this moment, God, this moment of crossroads, this moment of celebration. God, now as we explore your word a little bit, we ask that you will be with us, open our hearts, open our minds. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So to cherish the past, right? This is super interesting, right? Because a lot of times during the pandemic, I found myself cherishing the past. Because do that, like the, the past when you could just walk outside without a mask, right? When you could just like, oh, I could just go to somebody's house and ask without having to ask where they traveled, right? During the pandemic, I started cherishing the past a lot, right? When you could just go somewhere and the place would be open, Right? And I was in Florida, too, so it, was, it wasn't as long of a road as it was in California. You start thinking about the B.C., right, before COVID. And see, a lot of times you begin to think about things and glorify things that you didn't really think were that great in the moment. But when you've been at home for two, three months straight, it can start to feel amazing. The past is a funny thing, though, because the past is something that we often try to run away from, but also sometimes we try to run towards and all throughout the scriptures, God understands the difference that we have, right? He understands the challenge of that, right? At some points, he invites us to remember, and at other points, we are told to forget. I want to sh- show you a couple of verses real quick. Deuteronomy 8, verses 2, we're told, and you shall remember the whole way that the Lord has, your God has led you through these 40 years in the wilderness. Deuteronomy 32 says, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, he will show you, your elders, and they will tell you. That'll be you someday. Isaiah 46, verse 9 says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Right? Even as we take communion, right, we're told to do this in remembrance of God, the sacrifice made for us. Yet in other parts of the Bible, we are told to forget. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, right, and we're also told, before I read that verse, we're also told that Jesus forgets on behalf of us. So in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old has passed, and the new is here. Isaiah 43, verse 18 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. And the first part of Philippians 3, 13 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not count myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. So the reality is when we are cherishing something, when we're cherishing the past, It includes both remembering and forgetting. It means remembering how God led you in certain seasons, remembering how you accomplished something that you didn't think you could accomplish. Maybe for some of you that was this moment here, but I believe there's many more moments in store. Whether that was just finals week, your social anxiety, your season of depression, never thinking the pandemic was going to end, waiting to hear back on your college applications, or maybe when you weren't sure when you would have the money to do something or figure out what you were going to do. 
It includes both remembering and forgetting. Because see, cherishing is appreciating the person you were at different points in your life, at earlier points in your life, and seeing how those moments sow the seeds to where you are now and where you will become. But cherishing is also forgetting. It means seeing your past and seeing those moments as a place of reference, not as your place of residence. Forgetting is not making your home in the feelings and accomplishments of the past and seeing them as though they define you. Forgetting helps you realize that God invites you to places beyond what you've experienced. Forgetting is looking at the mistakes and hurt of the past and seeing them as a catalyst towards something new. Cherishing the past means realizing that yesterday's scars can become the birthplace for today's healing. And yesterday's joy can become the anchor that you hold on to in today's uncertainty. So in cherishing the past, we can know that there is a God who is weaving together our stories long before we ever realized it. Because God isn't just the God of the present or the future. God is also the God of our past. So as you cherish the past, know that it is both forgetting and remembering. And from there, you can hold on to the promises that God gives you for the next part of your journey. I'm a little bit behind on slides, but it's all good. I forget sometimes, guys. So live in the present. The next section, live in the present. The reality is that oftentimes, you guys have probably been asked this over the last few months. I've probably done it to you a couple of times. The, next, the question of what's next? What happens after you graduate, right? We live in, in, kind of in a moment where we expect what's going to happen next even as we're living in a present moment, where we're always sort of expecting that there's something better on the horizon, that this moment is like, okay, like, cool, you graduated, but where are you going to college? What are you going to become? And from the time we're young, we get asked that question, right? I remember as a kid, even in kindergarten, getting asked, what's my name? What's my favorite color? What, what do I want to be when I grow up? Right? This sort of future question, right? And so a lot of times it can cause us to get hampered in our current moment. But for others, and this might be you someday, you might sit back and dream of the good old days, right? The days when, you, when life was better, when life was easier, and life just made more sense. So as humans, it's hard sometimes for us to just live in the present. You guys know what I mean? Sometimes it's difficult. But the reality is that living in the present can be hard because we live in a culture that expects us to be at a certain place at a certain time in our life. And if we don't do that, we're failing. Right? It, it, it's the reason why on Instagram we only post the moments that are really cool, right? The moments that someone would be like, oh, look, they went on vacation. Oh, they got a new, new outfit. Well, we don't post the moments of sadness, right? The, the cereal in a bowl late night eating out of a Tupperware. That's going to happen in college, so just know, right? All those different moments, we don't, we don't share those moments because those aren't glamorous moments. But I believe when we live in the present, we can lean into the gift that today is. I have a friend in college it was, you know, sometimes you, a few of you from PV have roasted me for like some of my old man activities. Like I joked about how I wanted to drive to go look at the California poppies. And, but I had a friend in college who was a really into bird watching. Anybody into bird watching? Anybody ever done that before? You're going to have to admit it. I see no hands. Okay. Just talk, tell me later. Tell me. Oh, there we go. One. There we go. Mr. Boutros. So I used to ask him, I was like, dude, you are 21 years old. How can you enjoy bird watching. And he was like, dude, bird watching allows me to see the beauty and variety in our world. And it frees me from the normal pace of life. And I was like, bro, what? But it's so true because I believe actually God invites us to do that, right? To stop and smell the roses, as they say, right? To, to watch the things happening around us because it allows us to lean into the beauty and the, and the gift that today is. And I believe God invites us to see life from that vantage point. That's why God talks about the present. He said in Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lamentations 3, verse 22 says, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Live in the present. Yet one of, I would say, humanity's toxic traits is our inability to do that, right? Our disbelief that our current situation is enough. I'm going to jump to Genesis really quick. In Genesis chapter 1, we were created, humanity was created in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve lived a life of bliss and community and connection to God. Yet the serpent capitalized on the idea that maybe they were missing something, right? The enemy thought, man, they, there can't just be what you're dealing with right now. And he began to turn the truth into lies. 
I want to share these verses with you real quick, right? In Genesis chapter 2, God tells Adam and Eve this. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. But in the next few verses, the enemy, the serpent, sort of subtly changes the words from God. Now the serpent was more crafty than the wild animals the Lord God had made, and he said to the women, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Eve responds, we may eat from the trees of the garden, but God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will surely die. See, we see how in the mind of Eve, right, as, as, the, as the thought has been placed that maybe this current situation isn't that great, doubt begins to grow, and now she goes so far as to say, oh, not only can I not eat it, now I also can't touch it, right? She starts adding things on to make her current situation seem worse than it really is. And ultimately, in verse 6, right, we know how the story ends, right? We're not going to blame anybody, but it was seen that the fruit of the tree was good for food and became pleasing to her eye because what she began to touch was a reality that was in the future that she believed, right? She thought that there was something better beyond her current reality. See, the reality is sometimes we fear our current situation, and it can cause us to take measures and do things we wouldn't normally do, right? You guys have been in that moment where you, you feel the pressure of something like, oh, I got to get out of this. So you do something you wouldn't normally do. But I believe living in the present is fighting the urge to look ahead or look behind and instead see the beauty that sits in the gifts of today. And while we might have to fight some battles in the current moment, right, against our anxiety, against our fears, the expectations or dissatisfactions, and it might feel like we are surrounded there's a praise song that, that we sing sometimes where it says, it may look like I'm surrounded, but we're actually surrounded by God. And in God, we can fight the battles of today and enjoy the miracle and the gift that is today. One of my close friends, Kevin Wilson, has this quote. He says, fear isn't what you fight. Fear is where you fight. It becomes the place that you learn and grow in this moment and see that the Savior is growing you in this particular moment. And the reality is without acknowledging this fear, we might miss on the gifts and abilities that you might not be aware of even right now. And oftentimes they are hidden behind perceived weaknesses and within our fear. So as you learn to live in the present, I invite you to know that fear isn't what you fight. It's actually where you fight, class of 2023. Last section is, oh, and the key, and the key point, and you don't fight alone. You don't fight alone as you go through these moments. The last section is, to reach for the future, to reach for the future. The future is something which everyone reaches at the rate of 60 minutes an hour, whatever he does or whoever he is, right? Super deep quote, that's from C.S. Lewis. He says, the future exists 60 minutes an hour, 60 seconds a minute. The future arrives whether or not you reach for it or not. The future is going to happen. And that can be scary to think about, right? Some of you were afraid of this moment here, but you're here, right? Some of you, the, the reality is that class of 2023, I believe that God has a bright future for each of you. Beyond maybe what you realize, and I'm going to throw out a, a, a cliche graduation term, but I'm not apologizing for it. The best is yet to come, right, in your life, right? Yes, tomorrow, Sunday is happening, right? That might be the best. You get the actual diploma. But beyond that, there's so many possibilities and things that God has been weaving and growing within your life. But I want to say that the best is yet to come because tomorrow can always be better than today. And while we grow, learn, and love, there is a God who always remains constant. We read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And while we evolve, while we grow, while we may change, we can always turn to the same God who has been the same from the jump, who, was there, who remembered us from the time we were young, who thought about us, called us by, by our name from the time we were, even before we were born. That's why in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, maybe the most cliche Adventist graduation text, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. We hold on to that because it promises something beyond today. But we can know that there's one who holds that future. And, and we forget that, that Jeremiah was somebody who couldn't see this reality. So God had to continue to remind him that there was something greater, that God called him somewhere greater. And so as you dream, as you reach towards your future, family, we can rest in confidence knowing that there is a God who says dreams over our lives. A God who calls us kings and queens long before we had ever done anything. And we can rest 
in these words, knowing that God is preparing a place for us, and he will come to take us to be with him. Right? Because there isn't just the future that is two years from now, and maybe, maybe this will happen two years from now, but there is this, this reality of, of a great future, right? a great kingdom where we will be with God again. See, the future isn't just something we dream of in this life. There's a life to come, a kingdom that is being prepared for us. So as we work, we can know that God is at work in our lives and at work around us. A Savior who reached out to us on the cross and gave his life for us so that we could continue to reach towards him and reach outside of our comfort zone. Because God has believes and promised us a future that's, that's promised in, in Revelation 21 verse 4. It says, when God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. That's our promise. That's our promise of the future that we reach forward towards the day when we can know that there is a great dreamer dreaming with us, reaching out towards us. A God who prepares us for a place far greater than we could ever imagine. The God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So class of 2023, I want to end by, by saying a prayer that you guys maybe have heard. It. In fact, it's a song. It's called The Blessing. I'm not actually going to sing it. I'm going to just say it. If you, if you want to just, if you, as a church, we want to buy your, I know we have another benediction, but I want to say a special blessing over the class of 2023. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, class of 2023. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and your family and your children and their children. May his favor be upon you. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. Class of 2023, may you know that God is with you and that God is for you. Amen.